Hey folks, Dr. Mike here for Renaissance Periodization. Let's talk about workout window nutrition for strength purposes, for muscle gain, hypertrophy purposes, and for fat loss purposes. Let's get into it. So workout window nutrition is pretty straightforward. It's the idea that three factors can contribute to your training, performance, and body composition. Here they are. What you eat before training and essentially how much you eat of it and when you eat. There's a lot of times say like people will ask, hey, what's your pre-training meal like? And to be perfectly technical, I have to say, well, it's this, this, and that in these amounts, but it's also going to change if I eat it three hours before training versus an hour before training. Because what gives you energy three hours before training, it takes a little while to digest, might just make you throw up if you eat it an hour before training or something like that. Next is what you eat, potentially eat or drink during training, how much of it and when. And of course, what you eat after training, how much of it and when that occurs. All right. So that's essentially workout with nutrition. It's not rocket science. Now, here's the thing. It doesn't negate calories or macros or food types at all. It's just another part of the equation. And it's a very small part of the equation. It's not night and day. It's not like you clean up your workout window nutrition, and you're going to be fucking Superman the next day, but it can add up a little bit over time and to a meaningful extent. So if you're real, and here's the way I like to phrase this, and let me know if you think this is a decent way to think about it. If you're so serious about your training that you're always on Reddit reading all this stuff and you're always, you know, trying to search for the best answers and you're, you're thinking about this in your spare time, you train like five or six days a week and you really, really care about how jacked and how lean you are. Like if someone who hasn't seen you in a while says, dude, you're looking jacked and you look, you got to be honest with yourself. You're like, damn, that feels good to hear. If you care that much, you might as well put in some effort to work out with nutrition because someone could say like, doesn't matter that much. Like, yeah, but like I care enough to where even the little stuff matters to me, right? It's like if you're going to buy a, a car to like take on a track and race around, gee, you know, the kind of tires you have do really matter. Now for a regular car, who cares what kind of tires you have? If you really give a shit about racing, you're going to care about the little stuff. Same with workout window nutrition. So first up is strength. What does strength training, when your sessions are to get you stronger, what does that workout window nutrition looks like? So the pre-workout meal is the most important factor in strength training because it gives you lots of energy to do your best. It doesn't matter how well you recover from strength training workouts, after them, if before them and during them, you're not sufficiently energetic to hit big PRs and challenge big weights, eh, congratulations, you recovered from a whole lot of nothing. So your pre-training meal is a very, very important meal. And as far as macros, you probably want moderate protein, higher carb, and lower to moderate fat, which means protein should be like, let's say you eat four meals during the day. This one over N meal protein means you eat whatever, if this is one of your four meals, you eat one quarter of your daily protein. So if you eat 200 grams of protein per day and you eat four times a day, this would be 50 grams of protein, right? And then uh, a little bit more, some much, some amount more, than 25% of your daily carbs, okay? And let's say you have, you know, 400 grams of carbs per day, you eat this meal three hours before, it should be like at least 100 grams of carbs. It's a wallop of carbs. You eat that in white rice, you're gonna be full of energy and something like less than 20% of your daily fats, right? So as an example, you could have a meal of 50 grams of protein, 100 grams of carbs, and 20 grams of fat. Just an example, but something in that amount. And anything too much up one way or down from the other will be questioning if whether or not you're getting the most out of that pre-workout meal. Now, as far as composition is concerned, generally all meals are built around lean protein, whole grain carbs, fruits, veggies, if you're further from training, two or more hours. If you're closer to training, like close to like an hour before training or even closer, then faster digesting, more processed carbs are a much better idea because they'll get in the bloodstream quicker. You don't want to be in a situation where you're unracking your heaviest bench and your digestion is still like, hey man, I still had a piece of fruit in here. None of that's in your bloodstream. It's in your GI tract. It's going to make you feel worse, not any better. But if you have like a banana or a thing, Gatorade or, you know, uh, a low fat pop tart, you know, 45 minutes before you train, then yeah, you're actually going to be feeling really good. Your GI tract is not going to be annoyed at you. And you often don't really have to add any fats because just from eating lean proteins and carbs, the ancillary fats will come up to close to that amount. But if you're further from training and you're really pushing that 20%, you can add some uh, healthy fats uh, and that's totally fine. So 
Next, okay, so part of the pre-workout meal and pre pre-training strategy for strength is hydration. You don't want to be dehydrated, absolutely decreases performance, and it increases injury risk as well. So the thing about hydration is there's kind of two kinds of hydration. There's what you could just call hydration at face value, which is like person is dehydrated. They are given one liter of water. That's right, we're in Canada, we're doing liters. Smash liter of water, put it down, you are now hydrated. Now, as a system, you're technically hydrated because there's water somewhere in the system, but honestly, that water is just like in your esophagus and flowing into your stomach, and your muscles, if you're going to you know, do strength training and really pull on your tendons, they're still dehydrated because water doesn't magically just zoom. You're not a sponge. It doesn't just zoom through you. It takes a few hours to get you total dehydration in all of, or sorry, total hydration of all your body systems. So you want to hydrate well in advance, drink liter of water, three hours or something like that before training. And then you want to make sure that in your pre-workout meal, you have plenty of fluid so that you pee clear at least once uh, between the meal and the session. So you want to be in a situation where like you pull up to the gym, you know, Ooh, I got to pee. You pee and it's pretty clear and high volume. You could be pretty sure, as long as you weren't super dehydrated before then, that if you're relatively normally hydrated, you pee clear once before training, you're good to go. Your actual tissues that are gonna be contracting are well hydrated. Super, super important. What you don't wanna do is be like, oh man, I'm like peeing <laughs> dark red. If you're peeing dark red, go to the hospital. But you know, peeing really dark and like 15 minutes before training, you smash like half a gallon of water. Like congratulations, you now bloated your stomach up and it's gonna be hours before you're systemically hydrated anyway. Better than nothing, but not exactly accomplishing what we want. So hydration starts early. Make sure that's a part of your pre-training strategy. Intro workout. For most purposes, drinking water is just fine. You don't have to have any food because it gets there a little too late. If your session is much longer than an hour, an hour and a half, then maybe a protein carb hydration drink is a good idea. So what you want on that drink is half of the normal amount of meal protein. So if you normally eat like five meals a day and it's 200 grams of protein, which means 40 grams in each meal, then in a shake that you're using inter training, more like 20 grams in the meal, half the normal amount. 10% of your daily carbs, zero fats. So it should be like whey protein and Gatorade combo. And the fluid should be like 8% solution or something like that. So if you have, you know, so a, a liter of fluid, which is 1000 grams of fluid, that's going to be a total of 80 grams of protein, protein plus carbs in there. That's 8% solution. So, cause if you do anything more concentrated, it actually, uh, you have to drink more water on top of that to get the hydration to go through. If you drink anything less than that, then it, it's fine. It hydrates you really well, but it's going to be a shitload of fluid to drink to get all those protein and carbs. You might just start like, peeing mid lift or something like that, which is, you know, fun. It's a good time at the gym, but maybe not ideal for your circumstances. Post-workout for strength training, that meal is very important. Not as important as a pre-workout meal, but almost the exact co composition, macro, so on and so forth of the pre-training meal is totally cool. So it's pre-training meal, what we described, intra-shake maybe, usually just water, post-training meal, pretty similar. And, you know, you eat the post-training meal about as soon as possible. That doesn't mean you need to like race home or something like that. But I'll put, put it to you this way. If you're waiting longer than an hour to start eating after an important strength training session, you're missing some time. So any time between right after and half an hour to 45 minutes later is totally cool. If you're waiting longer than an hour, you could be eating a bit, oh, excuse me, you could be eating a bit sooner. Now, hypertrophy workout window nutrition, a little bit different. Pre-workout is of course very important to get tons of energy and it's very similar to the strength training stuff. So you just follow that verbatim. Intro workout, water's just fine for most purposes, just like for strength training. And if your session is much longer than an hour, hour and a half, protein carb drink is a good idea. Uh, it hydrates you and it actually promotes anti-catabolism. It sort of reduces how much muscle loss you may experience in the session. Same idea as with the strength shake, you know, half the usual amount of protein, 10% of your daily carbs, zero fats, 8% solution, you're good to go. The post-workout meal is probably the most important meal for hypertrophy because it potentiates the anabolic response after training. If you don't have a proper post-workout meal or no post-workout meal at all after training, your body's signals during the training is like, grow muscle, grow muscle, grow muscle. And afterwards, your your uh, you know your body's standing at the bus station of muscle growth, and nothing's no buses are stopping, nothing's coming by, and it's like I guess I'm supposed to take the muscle growth bus, but <laughs> no, it's coming to get me. And then your body will just walk to wherever muscle growth occurs. But that sucks. It's raining and it takes a long time. Not as effective. So if you don't eat really well after workout, you miss a bit of the benefits. Now, if you have an awesome proper post-workout meal, 
Okay, the equivalent of that analogy, it's stupidest fucking analogy ever, is if your muscle growth or your, your body's waiting at the muscle growth bus stop right after training, this huge mega bus of just like totally sexually depraved nymphos, tons of drugs and alcohol rolls up and the doors part and, you know, like a reincarnated Michael Jackson's driving the bus and all the best parts of Michael Jackson and is music blaring and it's like, hey, you going to the party? And you're like, oh my God, yes. And your body gets in there and it goes to muscle growth heaven and all is well. Whew, a stretching the analogy, uh, a rubber band there a bit. But in any case, it's important. <laughs> all I'm trying to say is the post-workout meal is important and it should be consumed ASAP. Okay, so it's not unusual for bodybuilders when they stop training, protein shake, carb shake, boom, right down the hatch, and then they drive home and then they have their first post-workout meal. So the macros for either that shake or the meal or combined should be moderate protein, the usual amount, high carb, and low fat, okay? So normal amount of protein, so if you, let's say if you have, you know, four meals a day and 200 grams of protein, that'll be a 40, 40 gram of protein meal, right? 30% or more of your daily carbs, that's a lot, right? And then 15% uh, or fewer of your daily fats, because we don't want the fats to slow down the digestion and we want the carbs to get right in there, exert the big glycemic load and glycemic index right away. An example is like 50 grams of protein or something like that. 120 grams of carbs, remember the strength example is 100, and only 15 grams of fat, the strength example was 20. This does mean that folks focused on hypertrophy training might not be able to eat out as conveniently as strength trainees. You're probably familiar with this if you're a hypertrophy person or a bodybuilder. Your strength training friends can just eat out at anywhere after the training. They just pick relatively healthy options and they're good because the carb to fat ratio is more normal, but your carbs are gonna be higher, your fats are gonna be lower, and that means that you don't have uh, as many options. Now, composition-wise, you could probably have predicted some of this, we're going to have leaner proteins that are relatively faster digesting, so not, nothing like nothing like you know super fatty ground beef, which takes a while to get through the system. Faster digesting processed carbs, if closer to training, especially and no added fats. So just some examples: you can have a sugary cereal with skim milk and whey on the side, or you can put your whey in the cereal. I don't think it ruins the taste. I just like to chug my whey after, right after, and. Protein shake with frozen yogurt. So a great thing to do after a hypertrophy workout is if there's a Froyo place close to your gym, you bring a protein shake with you and you order a shitload of Froyo, easy on the high fat toppings, smash that shit, drink a protein shake, amazing. Um, lean sushi, etc. The sushi with just like the fish and rice, not a ton of the mayo and shit like that. Really, really great options as ideas for post-workout meals for hypertrophy. All right, switching gears. Now, cardio workout nutrition is different. And uh, it's different in two ways. First, it's a little bit of a different approach than you'd normally take to any other kind of training. Second, when we mean cardio here, just in this video, we're talking about a dedicated session to burn fat. Okay, this is not like endurance cycling or getting ready to play tennis. This is cardio to burn fat. How do you eat in relation to that? Very, very common question that I'm super pumped I'm answering right now because we get it a ton of good. What do we do? Is it fasted? Is it not fasted? Do I have to eat before, during, after? What's going on? So here's the deal. Direct research shows that fed and fasted cardio, so whether or not you eat before cardio or don't eat, basically leads to about the same effects on fat loss. If you do fed cardio, you do burn a lot of the food you eat and not a lot of your body fat, but that means you get less, less food later and you burn body fat to make up for it. If you do fasted cardio, you burn a lot of just your own body fat, but then you eat more food later because the macros are the same for each condition and you don't burn as much body fat later. So dealer's choice, but they lead to almost the same results. However, there are some practical concerns here that probably bias you in, in the direction a bit closer to fasted cardio and here's why. You're usually not hungry when you're doing cardio. Okay, when you're sitting around trying to do work on your computer or you're listening to like a Zoom lecture or one of your professors or something and you're like, fuck, dude, I can eat a fucking horse. I can't concentrate. Damn it, fat loss sucks. When you're doing cardio, you put your tunes in, you put in a podcast, you're on that treadmill. You're not like usually very hungry right then and there because there's a bit of a fight or flight response, even just a tiny one, get your mind off of shit. You're actually doing something. So cardio can be viewed as not hunger time, okay? And... So, so there's a reason not to eat before cardio because we don't need to not be hungry because we're not going to be hungry anyway during cardio. Okay. So point number one, point number two is you don't need a ton of energy to do cardio. You do when you're doing performance cardio, but fat loss cardio, for the love of God, it's low intensity. If you need a ton of energy to do, you know, 120 beats per minute on the elliptical or incline walking, good God, like you're, you must be real deep into your cut or something like that. So usually you don't need a ton of energy. So 
If you're doing cardio in a fasted state, okay, without having eaten recently, then you're kind of buying yourself more non-hunger time. And then when you eat your meals later, they're closer together. And that means that if you get your cardio in when you don't have food in your stomach, you add like an hour or two to your day when you're not hungry. And then later on the rest of the day, you get quote unquote more food, same amount of food in a smaller feeding window, which means you get to feel fuller. It's kind of a best of both worlds. Now, when you're done with cardio, you do want to eat something, especially with protein in it, to reduce catabolism and make sure your body's back into a sort of recuperative state. Uh, and carbs are optional in this case. So it's totally fine to do cardio and then eat a meal of just protein or just protein and fat. Lower on the fats usually because you want the proteins to get in there. But nonetheless, carbs are uh, either way dealer's choice. So here's the thing, practical considerations. If you do cardio in the morning, don't eat before, get it done, then have breakfast. Great idea. You can have like I don't know, black coffee or something, and then gave yourself a little bit more energy, that's totally fine. If you do cardio in the middle of the day, wait at least three hours an after your last meal. So if you eat a meal at 1 p.m., don't do cardio until like 4 p.m. Then do cardio four to five and then have a meal after. That maximizes the length of that not eating window and it gives you more opportunities to stay full later through on the rest of the day. And you probably wanna avoid doing cardio as your last activity of the day because you don't wanna get into a catabolic state and then go to sleep, okay? What you wanna do is if cardio you do in the evening, do your cardio, then at least have like a casein shake or some slow digesting protein, go to sleep so that your muscles can be recovered to some extent, catabolism can be muted, and then you don't uh, lose a lot of muscle overnight. And it's never going to be a lot, but it can be some and over many, many days and weeks and months of fat loss dieting. You don't want to get into the practice of doing a ton of cardio and then not eating anything right after for a long time. Folks, if you're curious about much more in-depth explanation with tons of nuances, we have the Renaissance Diet book, Renaissance Diet 2.0, has an enormous chapter on nutrient timing, which covers all these ins and outs and tons of other specifics. Give that a thought and uh, see you next time for the next video.